Greetings fencers. So if you're wondering why the jacket's unzipped, uh, if you've never used a light jacket with foam inserts, you actually can't sit down in them. Otherwise it chokes you. And so you have to either sit in a recline or have it undone. We're going to go through our forearm protection today. So a bit of an intro. I've never liked forearm protection and I'm still on my journey uh, trying to find forearms uh, that can be used in different situations. It's very important to me to have my kit feel like Bloßfähchen sparring and so when you have a big heavy 400 gram uh, forearm protector along with another four to 500 gram glove on each hand that's like you're carrying two swords on the end of your arms before you even have your sword in your hand. So it's important to me I'm always looking for how can I keep everything as light as possible so I can stay as mobile and fast as possible and, and feel unencumbered. My first tournament, I didn't wear any forearm protection with my FG. I had a ton of bruises, uh, but I was so high on adrenaline that I never felt them. But the weeks after, I had a lot of uh, blue and green on my arms. So the first forearm protector that we're going to go through are the Absolute Force forearm protectors. I think it's important to go through them first. There's something easily found in North America and they look identical to standard SPES and superior fencing forearm guards, but they are not the same and they are essentially not really usable. So they come standard significantly longer and so long that you can't actually, they'll be up by your wrist at the end where you can't hold a glove with them. It's just, it's always pushing off your glove. So we actually took off this first strap because the other, the first strap used to be over here. We took it off, cut the plates, cut the felt, restitched on the strap, uh, and then sewed it all together. So they're at least wearable, but the other problem comes, they don't reach anywhere near the top of a jacket. This is an AP light, so it can almost reach the top on this jacket specifically, but on any standard jacket, it's going to look a lot more like this with the whole top half of your arm exposed. So not really ideal if you're wanting to stop those downward blows after someone run off because the forearms can get hit quite hard on the very top. I got two pairs because I had not used any other forearm guards at the time. Assumed they'd be the same as all the other brands, uh, but they were definitely a huge regret and a waste of money. So do not buy these if you see these next to Spess or any other brand of forearm protection. Another pair of forearm gloves that we have are the Red Dragon. So these are actually usable. They are quite heavy, but they do the same as all the other brands. Nothing wrong with them. So they'll cover the entire forearm, they'll be completely protected, and everything will be great. I especially like that they did not have the plates go all the way to the end. There's a good inch all the way around that is likely where your glove will need room and just to give a bit of breathing room for wrist rotation. The major, somewhat major downside is both of our forearm guards for Red Dragon, all of the plates are broken. So I can bend every single section and almost bend the full forearm guard inwards. So most of them are broken at three places, some just two places, and it's, <laughs> they, they definitely did not survive. Uh, they still protect, but that's definitely some gaps in the armor, and if you're wanting your equipment to be pristine condition, this is may not survive that. And something to note with the Red Dragon elbow pads, elbow pads really don't need uh, foam on the inside. The jacket's there for that. All you need is just the outer shell, the skeletal structure. Something like this barely stays on. It, it's not covering it. So you can see it, it's, I can just easily 
slide up because the elbow's not going inwards. I might just cut out all of the foam inside of it, but I had tried to shape it inwards. They come even flatter than what it looks like now. This is after shaping it, so they're really not worth ever just buying the uh, elbow pads. The Spess elbow pads are definitely the best and simplest that I've used. They have everything necessary. They're just the shell, which means the elbow goes nice and deeply into it. You really don't need anything more than this. There are other brands that make stuff that I'm sure would stay on the arm as well, but you know, you, you don't have to look far for one of the best elbow protectors. And we also tried using, um, you know, roller skating type of protection, the sort of road protection, but these I find would slide around too easily. They don't completely conform uh, to the back of the elbow and just weren't quite as usable. But I'm sure you can find ones that work better. The next forearm guards I got were actually the bronze prize at VHG 2019. So I got superior fencing, uh, forearm elbow protectors, and these are definitely very good. They're what I wore in my next tournament, uh, once I had the AP light and actually needed forearm protection. So they fully cover all the way around an arm easily. They're a good length, they're not going to pressure your gloves and make it hard to hold the sword. So they work fine, look good. I believe they're pretty much identical to Spess. However, there is one part that is nice that they added. So I don't know if the Spess ones have these, so let me know if they do. Something that happens with form protectors is the strap will slide while sparring and it will end up being on your wrist. So it'll slide all the way off and it's just a bit of discomfort. However, these actually stop that. The loops on the side, you can actually put the strap through uh, on both straps, but it's mainly the wrist one that's important. So now it's actually underneath the strap. And I can Velcro on and now it's not going to slide around as easily. So that's a nice little added thing. Uh, that they did if you know you're going to be sparring for a long period you can do that and they're going to be locked in place and not actually moving around the elbow pads that came with them were interesting they had the same problem as the red dragons they really weren't conforming and i might cut out the foam in them as well however they worked better because they at least have these extra parts to keep it in the elbow section of your arm so they have big extra plates already built in which are definitely a nice thing to be added built in reasonably okay i think cutting out that foam would be a lot nicer of a fit but they're still not quite as conforming as just the standard elbow protector because these will still just slide around really easily because your elbow just can't go inside of it the last pair of heavy forms that uh, one of our club members has are the Gecko uh, forearm gloves from Spess. So they are good, They're, they seem pretty much identical to the other heavy forearm gloves. There's not going to be any major problems with them. Uh, the leather on them, or the fake leather I think, has not ripped or anything, so they are durable. The straps do slide on them. And a recommendation would be if just some rubber could be put on the straps, that would stop them from sliding on. They would catch the leather and not move around as much. Now we get to my favorite forearm protectors. So these are light forearm protectors. So that's the forearm and elbow protection that we used and have used. Thanks for watching. Keep studying. Keep practicing. Be light. So. It got really dark. Red Dragon. Uh, all the plates 